Today we're going to be looking at the word regression. Why we use it in this context, how it came to be, why it kind of makes sense, but also kind of doesn't. Your time is valuable, so let's get into it. It's a goal. When we're tasked with regression analysis, we're really tasked with creating a line that best fits the data. Now you know that this could be quadratic, it could be straight, it could be exponential, but we're just trying to draw a line that fits all the data points. A line that fits through data points is really just a summary of the relationship between the two inputs. If we have an input X and a result Y, when we fit a best fit line, it just tells us the relationship between X and Y. That is, if we plug in this X, we'd expect this Y out. Now you've also probably heard that correlation does not mean causation. So just because this Y maps to this X does not mean that this X causes this Y. It's just that they happen to go together. So that's called a correlation. Correlation relationship sounds kind of weird. So what if we did some wordplay? This is what I want you to remember that a regression is really just a co-relationship between an input or several inputs X and a result Y. So why do we call curve fitting or this co-relationship regression? Where does the word regression come from and what does it really mean? Now I said that we're not gonna do any equations but we're instead gonna look at the words. To understand the word regress, let's look at a more common, everyday familiar word, progress is made up of two terms. First is the prefix, second is the root. This root, gress, is actually the same root as in gradient, and that's grad, and it means a step, a degree, or a walk. Now when we pair this root with the prefix pro, which means forward or future, we see that progress means walking or moving toward the future. And this makes sense given our understanding of the word progress. We're making progress in the course, we're moving toward the future. So hopefully your gears are spinning on what regress will mean. We're gonna be dealing with the same root, but changing the prefix. The prefix re means back or again. Now to prove to ourselves that these make sense, we can also think of project and reject where the root ject means to throw. So project means we're throwing forward. For example, I'm throwing my voice toward the camera as I'm projecting, whereas reject means to throw back. So for example, a professor rejects your application, they throw your application back to you. I know English is frustrating, but sometimes it makes sense. So we know that regress means walking back or a step back. But what are we taking a step back toward? Since we're learning English, we're dealing with a direct object here. What are we regressing toward? In the absence of any new information, we regress back toward the best fit line. In other words, unless we have probable cause to deviate from the best fit line, our expectation for a future observation should be the output that corresponds to the input as a function of the best fit line. Now, the setup of every single regression equation looks like this, where the output equals what we call the true data generating process, DGP, plus an error. And this error is also called noise. Anything that we would be able to capture from this noise would go into the true data generating process. So our output is a function of x, and here this uh, notation means that x can be a matrix plus some error. Now what does that look like on the graph? Well, this observation right here, we would expect it to be on this line, however it's not. So this line represents our data generating process. So why do we call it regression? Because we regress back to this line if we don't have any other information that would tell us that it should be any different than this line. And that's because our best guess of y is the expectation of the regression equation, which equals the expectation of this data generating process, given the inputs, plus the expectation of our error term. Here's the kicker. 
The expectation of our data generating process can also be called the mean, and the expectation of our errors are zero. So we regress to the mean, unless there's an error. Now, why are our errors centered on zero? Let's look at that. If you run a regression in something like MATLAB, it might produce a histogram or a QQ plot decomposing the errors. And you think, why do I need normal errors? We say our errors are normally distributed with zero mean and a constant variation. The zero means that it's centered on zero, such that our expectation of the errors is zero. So they're not shifted above or shifted below the DGP line. So what does it mean to be normal? Smaller errors, say within one standard deviation, occur more frequently than larger errors. And we remember to interpret the normal distribution as frequency going vertically. And in this case, we're looking at size this way. So errors closer to our expectation happen more frequently because the graph is higher than errors far away. So this is it. This is why regression analysis is called regression analysis. Because we're moving back to the data generating process because we can't predict these errors. Now, if we're working with time series analysis, we say we forecast into the future. But what does forecast mean? For means forward, cast means throw. So we're casting forward the data generating process line into the future. So another word for forecast could be progress instead of regress looking backwards.